Hey guys! So I separated the books into nine different sections. So 42 books, nine sections. The most I think has like six or seven books and the one with the least is only has like one book in it. And I'm gonna start with that first section. This is the most expensive book I paid for. Most of these books I got from Goodwill or a thrift store or a used bookstore. This one's from a used bookstore and it was $7.50. This is Metamorphosis by Ovid. So um, I've read this book before, but I don't have it with me. So I've just, I've always really loved this book. It's um, a collection of Roman myths and classical myths kind of told through Ovid's eyes. He was born in 43 BC and it's just kind of um, covers the idea of transformation through his eyes. I just really like his writing style and the prose. I think it's quite beautiful. Um, I've always enjoyed classical poetry, especially classical Roman poetry. I do not read Latin, um, but I guess that would be an interesting goal, learning how to speak Latin to read it in its original language. So there's that. This is the first section. So <laughs> my one classic book. Um, my next section is going to be book talk books. So books that I saw on TikTok and when I saw it at Goodwill or the thrift store, I was like, oh, I should get that just so I have a chance to read it. And the first one in that section is Lovely War. This is by Julie Berry. And this one, again, kind of connects to the old gods. So there is um, Aphrodite in this book. Oh, that's quite interesting has one of those covers that are like a false start which I read some well I saw somewhere that they do that so you open it to read the reviews first which I mean that makes sense but yeah there's like three pages of reviews for the book but it looks quite interesting it's set in the 1940s so I think I would like that I'll read this first and if I think my grandma would like it I'll give it to her because she likes historical fiction but we'll see. And then the last book in my book talk inspired section is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Uh, Schwab. I love V.E. Schwab's other works. I have not read this one before though. And I was very excited when I saw this for like a dollar. I'm like, a dollar? See how much it does it retail for? Real sales for $26.99 US. And. I probably wouldn't pay that new I would probably get it from the library but I saw that it was a dollar so I was like oh I'll get that just to like check it out so oh no Gaiman reviewed it have a big stack of him to come but he's in a different vibe section so yeah excited to read this um it's basically a woman makes a deal with a demon and everyone forgets who she is every single day so she has to reset so I think that's pretty interesting so Add that to the TBR. Okay, next section is science fiction. This is a pretty short section, there's only two books. So from Dollar Tree, I got Star Trek Voyager, um, Architects of Infinity. Uh, I just, I like Star Trek in general, and I was like, oh, this is a um, interesting one. So this one is with Captain Janeway. So it's kind of in the middle of the TV series, so that'll be fun to read. And then I got The X-Files, The Goblin. I like X-Files, I've um, binged their TV sh show whenever I can. And I saw this book, I'm like, oh, that's pretty funny. So it's kind of interesting to see how um, Dana and them were written about and how they would be characterized in a textual form. So I'm kind of interested to see that. So this one like was first published in 1994, but it was reprinted in 2008. That's pretty cool. It's a pretty old story. <laughs> Advertising for the X-Files movie. Okay, next section. Um, these are, the next section is popular authors that don't know that much about. So Carl Heisen, 
I pretty, I think I've read some of his other books. I, I think I had when I was a lot younger, but I don't know about this one. So, but I think I did. I think he wrote Flipped and maybe Flushed. And those ones are usually set in Florida and they have to do with the environment. And this one is also connected to the environment. Yeah, so. I, I liked his other books because they kind of showed you how a random person can interact with the environment and learn how to protect it and kind of learn the consequences of their actions. So this is Sick Puppy. Again, set in Florida, so I feel like there's going to be some of the Florida Man serial type in here. I'm kind of excited to read this. It's um, like what happens when you have too much money and too much time. So there's that one. The next one, popular authors I don't really know that much about, is Stephen King. I think it's Owen King, but Sleeping Beauties. I saw this was at Goodwill yesterday. And at the Goodwill now, I think hardbacks are $3. So this one was $3, but I'm like, that's a chunky book. Like, it's the size of my head, if not bigger than my head. I have a big ass head. I have a big head. So there's that. But yeah, this is Sleeping Beauties by Owen and Stephen King. So there's a sleeping disease that one person, Eve, is immune to. Oh, it's set in an Appalachian town. And in a woman's prison. So I feel like this would be interesting to read. I feel like it would take me a while if it's not very fast moving. But it's, pr it's a pretty big book. But I'm excited to read this one. It kind of matches my nails. Kind of moving on to that is authors I do know a lot about, but I haven't been able to read a lot of their work. Um, C.S. Lewis, he wrote the Chronicles of Narnia series and A Grief Observed. I've read a lot of his other works, but this is the Screwtape Letters by him. So these are just like a bunch of letters that he wrote to a Mr. Wormwood and they're kind of all like satirical. Which I hope this is kind of funnier and maybe happier. Yeah, so that's a pretty short one compared to Stephen King. Next one I have is The Crane Wife. This is by Patrick Ness. Patrick Ness wrote The um, a Monster Calls, I believe. And I really love that book. I read that in like two hours when I first got it. But this one is just kind of... Um, about the main character George who falls in love with a crane. George is a divorced middle-aged man who's kind of lonely but he sees a crane, falls in love with it. It's supposed to be witty, magical, and romantic so I don't know. I just I really like the cover. They say don't judge a book by the, its cover but it's why there's a cover to begin with. Then the next is Terry Pratchett's The Last Continent. There's Terry. So I've heard of Terry Pratchett, but I haven't had a chance to read his writing. So this is also science fiction I am seeing, but this one, a professor is missing from a, <laughs> he's the professor of cruel and unusual geography. That's, that's an interesting title for a professor. Um, yeah. Oh, he gets turned into an ape. So this seems like it'd be an interesting sci-fi book to read and get introduced to Pratchett. Next is, I have two by David Sedaris. I read one of his his book Naked when I was in um, college. I really enjoyed it. So I found two other ones by him to read. So this is Holidays on Ice, his other book. You When you are engulfed in flames, when you are engulfed in flames. I feel like this picture is very famous. I've seen it a lot on um, Pinterest and Tumblr. Or in this section is Neil Gaiman, and I guess Terry Pratchett again. Um, Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett in Good Omens. Saw the TV show, love the TV show. I've already read this book, but I didn't have this copy. This looks like Mm, where is it? Because I know this book came out in the 90s. <laughs> it references Bohemian Rhapsody and the copyright. 
Um, yeah, this one came out in 1990. It's mine was just public. The other copy I have was published like two or three years ago, like around the time the TV show came out. So I like how cool. It even has like special text on the inside. But anyways, Good Omens is an angel and a demon come together and they kind of have to stop the Antichrist from ending the world. So it's a very enjoyable book. Um, they're even going to do a series two, which I saw an interview between, um, with Neil Gaiman about how at the press conference for Good Omens the, that night they shared a hotel room. Because not a press conference, the book tour. They shared a hotel room the one one night, and because they couldn't afford to have two rooms, and they were kind of talking it out, and they wrote down the idea for a second Good Omens book, and this was back in the '90s, so they never really went any farther with it. But the book was a success, and now they're going to do a season two, so it's kind of nice seeing that um, live on. And my next Neil Gaiman book is American Gods. This is like the TV show cover. I see ads and I see clips of the TV show all the time, but I have no idea what it's about. So I'm gonna read the background. I just grabbed this off the shelf because I saw Neil Gaiman. So I'm excited for this Neil Gaiman book. And then I have one last Neil Gaiman book. This is The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. I was listening to an audiobook from the library and I think I got like halfway, oh, Wait, I got this from Goodwill, and someone left their child's art in it. It's kind of interesting child's art. Jesus is my hero. <laughs> he has, a, he is tall, has long brown hair, wears sandals everywhere. Um. Just Virginia things. What's the other thing that's in this book? Oh, someone's drawing of someone named Macy. I wonder if that's who on this book. But yeah, I got this book at Goodwill. Mm, I got this one actually in Pennsylvania, so that makes it really funnier. This one was $2. Um, I read half, I got through half of it as an audiobook, but then I kind of got busy and forgot about it. So I can see how it ends now. I probably have like this much left of it. So <laughs> that'll be nice. Um, graveyard books. So basically it starts with this boy who he kind of dies and gets adopted by ghosts, if that makes any sense, by his local cemetery. So this book kind of covers his adventure when he befriends a real girl. I really enjoyed how far I got into it. So I'm kind of interested to see how it ends. It's like only half of, half of the pile. On to the other half. Um, these are going to be, I feel like some of those are young adult books, but these are more young adult books. Starting off, um, Percy Jackson in the Olympians. This is the original series. I found this at Goodwill. It was five dollars for all five of these books in the box set. I know they sell these at Target for about 20 bucks. So I was like, that's a good deal. I had bought all of these on Kindle when I was like 12 <laughs> and I had read them all, but I don't have that Kindle account anymore. So I don't have the books and I was like for five bucks for all five of the books, that's a pretty good deal. So I got those. Percy Jackson, if you don't know, um, by Rick Reardon, is basically about demigods. So Percy, he is the son of Poseidon, which, is that a spoiler? And it's kind of his adventures and his quest as he grows up as a teen. Very good books and very enjoyable. Um, I got this book, Sadie. The, like a lot of these books I went to Goodwill yesterday, they were all like in a stack. I'm like, which person donated all of their like fun new books? But this one's called Sadie by Courtney Summers. And basically I was kind of interested in this one because um, Sadie's sister passes away 
and she starts a co like a podcast to f find the murderer of her sister. So I was kind of like, oh, that's really cool. I don't really listen to true crime podcasts. I like um, history podcasts, kind of talking podcasts, but I feel like this is kind of an interesting take, especially on like a modern news form and how it's written down. Um, so I'm excited for this one. I might read this one next. And then I have, I got this one today, The Dante Club by Matthew Pearl. So it's set in Boston, 1865. About, I feel like this would be a dark academia themed read because it's set at, um, it's set with academics. So an elite group of America's first Dante scholars. So it's taking Dante's Inferno and having murders themed after those, after that. So they have to find the killer who is doing these Dante inspired murders. So that sounds very interesting. Um, very tiny print. That'll be fun. Then there's this book by Adriana Matter, How to Hang a Witch. I just saw that title like as I was going through the shelves, How to Hang a Witch. I was like, that sounds like a very interesting read. So she gave the char main character her same last name, huh? That's kind of an interesting author choice. I've, I haven't really seen that before. I guess Jane Austen with her characters. Um, so basically, Samantha Mather moves to Salem, Massachusetts, and she has to start over in the middle of high school. But she's targeted by the descendants of past witches because her great 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 grandfather was a, like a witch hunter. Huh. That's kind of interesting. So she's gonna like kind of turning history back on its descendants. I got this one today. It's by Amy Rose Capetta and Corey McCarthy, Once in Future. I saw this one and I was excited. This probably falls into sci-fi, but it's basically what's happened if Prince Arthur was reincarnated in like spaceship times, like travel and fighting, but it's also, her name is Ari Helix. So King Arthur is reincarnated as a woman who pulls a magic sword from an ancient resting place as the 42nd reincarnation of King Arthur. So there's never been a girl King Arthur until this book for Arth for um, Merlin. It's kind of about them and their journey. So okay, that sounds like a very interesting story. I feel like I could get through this book pretty quickly. Because I don't feel like it would be pretty slow. I feel like it'd be pretty, like lots of quests. Yeah, and it's presented by James Patterson. He presents a lot of books. I wonder if he works with new and upcoming authors to do that. Um, last last one in this section is the Canning Season by Polly Horvath. I just saw this cover and I thought it was so cute with the little bear and the print. So this book follows the main character Ratchet Clark and how her mother uproots her to go live in Maine for the summer. Next section, pretty short section, travel. So I got this one at a bookstore. I am going to be traveling overseas so I kind of need to know some German. So this was 348. It's just some basics of German with like pictures and it would be a good just to put in my pocket, like at the grocery store, or basically greetings, like guten tag. So I just thought that would be pretty useful. And then Switzerland, because I'm going to Switzerland. And this, this is just a travel book. This was actually the most expensive book. I actually had to go and buy this from Barnes and Noble because I couldn't find um, any at um, Goodwill or any thrift store. And I kind of wanted a current one. And on Amazon and I kind of wanted the current one because the ones on Amazon and eBay were around the same price or more expensive. This was $25 and I'm like, I'm probably only going to go to Switzerland once in my life. I might as well make sure I'm well planned. So 
most expensive book. Next section. These are kind of um, cultural, I, I wouldn't call them cultural, but maybe culturally connected books. So they tell the people's experiences or they have a cultural lesson. Um, this is Bill Bryson's A Walk in the Woods. So this is talking about his time hiking the Appalachian Trail. And I went to a talk when I was probably like 13 or 14 with my grandma about, and it was this guy telling his story about how he walked the Appalachian Trail, not Bill Bryson, but just another person. And the Appalachian Trail is about 2,000 miles from Georgia to Maine. And it usually takes people six to seven, eight months, depending on how long to hike. And basically you're walking 20 miles a day for six to seven months. So that's a long time to be walking. <laughs> and you're kind of just living with everything on your back so i've always wanted to do that i've done a lot of research about that but i don't think it's right for me at this time in my life but this i saw this so i'm like oh at least i can read about it so excited for that one i got this one today it's by henry marsh it's called do no harm so it's about um, life death and brain surgery and it's basically about what happens at modern day hospitals and like how doctors or people, even though they're doing these amazing procedures, how they have to hold on to their humanity, but also have so much power over other people's health and kind of how they deal with that. So excited for that one. The Secret Life of Bees by Sue Monk Kid. Kid. So, this is basically when this young woman, her stand and mother, gets um, thrown into prison for calling out racists. And she bails her stand and mother out, and they escape to to burn South Carolina. And they kind of, there's like this mystery about Lily's real mother. But they're introduced to bees and honey and the Black Madonna. And I just thought that this book would be um, kind of interesting because I'm in the South right now. And kind of the story is about like Black women beekeepers. So that would be fun. Um, I got this book by Zora Neale Hurston. Uh, Barcavoon, The Last of the Black Cargo. Um, their Eyes Are Watching God. The book that I know her most for, I did part of my thesis, thesis work for my master's degree on that book. So when I saw this, I was like, oh, I haven't read this one by her before, so I'll give it a read. It's pretty short, but I'm, it probably packs a punch. So. so in 1927, Hurston traveled to Plateau, Alabama to visit 86-year-old Cujo Lewis a survivor of the Clotilda, the last slaver known to make the transatlantic journey. And Cujo was enslaved for 50 years after the slave trade was outlawed. So he was illegally brought to the United States and then enslaved for 50 years after that. So Hurston was not only an author, but a cultural anthropologist, and that's where she's inspired with a lot of her writing that like, talk about social issues, especially as a black woman. So this book, um, I feel like it'd be important to understand not only her outlook on life, but how she interacted with life and on the back. Toni Morrison even wrote that her son was one of the most important, the greatest writers of her time, and I think that's absolutely true. No one can tell the truth like Hurston can. So very excited to see where this one leads me. Um, a kiss and a lighter angle is Tuesdays with Maury. So I matched with someone on Tinder and he had something about a book in his profile. And I'm like, what's your favorite book? And he said, Tuesdays with Maury. And I was like, oh, I have to check it out. So I saw this at Goodwill today and I'm like, it's a dollar. I can see what it's what it's about. So this is a memoir that's kind of um, about life lessons. So I was like, that'll be interesting to see maybe what this person saw so much in it. And then 
The Overstory by Richard Powers. This one I think is a collection of a bunch of different topics that kind of have to do with people interacting with their environment. So I thought this one would be fun. It has another one of those covers that are meh. And then the last one is Leonard Cohen's The Flame. This is poems, notebook lyrics, and drawings. I've really, I've started reading this one about halfway through. Um, it has some of his artwork. You might know Leonard Cohen. Uh, he wrote and sang Hallelujah that they used in Shrek. There is a Shrek version, but yeah. And um, we like it darker. I just really like his stuff. When I saw this book, I was kind of, I was really excited because I'm like, it's for one beautiful. It caught my eye with the flame and his songs have always spoke to me. He has a wonderful voice. Wow, oh, so many books. Now on to the last section, which is books that have to do with writing. So I work as an English teacher online and I'm actually gonna try and post some videos of my lessons online. So that way, if you guys want to, you can kind of see what I teach and just so that that reference is there. So okay. getting books is kind of difficult. It's hard to find good resources for teaching that aren't all online because that's kind of hard to write into lesson plans or continue that way. So I found this book today the Right Start by Jennifer Hallisey. So this is a book about um, a guide to nurturing writing at every stage from scribbling to formal forming letters and writing stories. So I just thought um, I teach mostly from like 12 to adults, but this kind of focuses on the younger years from toddlers to 12. So it's kind of a block in my education and knowledge about teaching. And I thought maybe this book would be a great way to learn more about that. And it, it's sectioned pretty nicely. Um, the different sections, chapters, so I feel like this would be pretty easy for me to get through and incorporate. Maybe I could start offering lessons for younger kids. <sighs> Complete op opposite of that is how to read literature like a professor. Um, I do have my master's degree in English, so I am kind of trained on how to read like a professor, but I feel like this would be a great resource for not only how I read, but how other people read and how to talk about it, because it focuses on taking people we would know already in the English academic sphere and kind of focusing on how we would read between the lines. And yeah, so this is by Thomas Foster, so. I feel like that'll be good for me just for like the background knowledge and then I want to do a lesson about writing with writing and how to research and prepare because there's a lot of work especially that goes into thesis work that takes where you spend a lot more time collecting resources than you would write which <laughs> I feel like I did a lot of but basically this is the craft of research by Wayne Booth Gregory Cullen and Joseph Williams. So I'm going to use this book and kind of just, I have another book that I'm using mainly, but this kind of focuses on like the questions you can ask while you do research, um, what kind of sources you would use, going beyond the predictable source. And I feel like it's just be helpful because there's some questions in here for like, um, topics like this one, like, how to find what you want to research that I feel like I never even was told about. So I feel like this will be helpful again, bridging my knowledge, but also helping me write lesson plans. Got this one today, a short guide to writing about biology. A lot of my training for writing is about, um, is writing for literary works. So um, talking about other books like I told you Hurston or technical writing or um, ESL, those kind of things, but not really science. So 
This is by Jan Petnik, and it's a Pearson book. So this is probably someone's text textbook, but it kind of talks about passive voice statistics. Fun. So I just felt like this would be a good book to kind of, again, fill in my knowledge blank. I feel like the more you learn and the more you spend time researching one topic, you realize how big it is. When I first started my English teaching journey in t English education as a student, um, you kind of think there's like one way of writing, but there's not. There's a bunch that you have to learn to focus on. Like someone was able to write a whole book about how to write about biology. So there's something to be said about that. And yeah, I have three books left. The Art of Dramatic Writing by Rahul Igri. I don't know if I said that right. So this is basically how to write um, a play. You have to be a playwright um, and write playwriting books. So that it kind of talks about plot or character, premise, character growth, and I've already started using this in some of my um, lesson plans, and I really enjoy reading it. It's a pretty good read, and it kind of like each chapter covers a different aspect that you might have a problem with. This one is strength of will in a character, so I feel like this is a good way to expand the idea of how to tell a story. And then I have um, Write Right by Jan Vinola, Vinolia. This is basically just a general book that talks about all the different aspects of writing. And I feel like this is a good book to have for me just as, like, I'll keep on my desk. Someone has an English question. Because sometimes when you Google English questions, you can't find a good answer. And... This one like shows you the correct ways to use a colon or let's see what else is in here choosing the right person for your audience like who your audience is and then it has a whole list of just common spelling mistakes that it's just good to check like um compatible or biodegradable so yeah I really enjoyed this one. I've already used it in some of my lesson plans. And then my last book, book 42, is the Everything Creative Writing Book. I really like this book. Again, I think I've said that about every book, but if I didn't like it, I probably wouldn't have bought it. And it kind of just covers the different aspects of writing. So poetry, planning, screenplay, nonfiction, novels, short stories. So. I feel like if you're interested in writing but you don't know where to start, this is a really great book to get. I got this at Goodwill for a dollar and I feel like it was worth every penny. So that's all of my books that I've gotten in this past month. And I am realizing I have a problem. I've gotten 42 books and just last month at home I got rid of 400 of my books. I donated them. <laughs> And I circled back. I've added 40 more, 42 more to the collection. But um, I'm excited to get started on reading them and seeing where I go. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Bye.